Now we're getting into the uh, county commissioner's uh, races. Okay, uh, the second district county commissioner race is in the southern part of the county and uh, it uh, flows uh, around Centralia down through uh, Wetmore and Dolph. Uh, the uh, uh, first the uh, first uh, person to uh, file for that race is Austin Petrie. Austin and his wife are from Centralia where he farms with his brother and on the family farm. And they farm around the Centralia and the Gulf area. So, Austin. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ray. I'll start out, uh, public speaking isn't one of my strong points, so don't hold this against me. Uh, so this is my first dive into politics. Uh, anytime you do something like this, you need to check with your wife. And uh, thankfully, uh, my lovely wife, Michelle, she agreed. So uh, here I stand today. Um, we got three daughters. Um, they're a handful, but uh, they don't really have a whole lot of input, so I didn't have to get their uh, backing. Uh, like Ray said, I'm from Centralia. Uh, I graduated from high school there in 2001. Uh, followed that up with an uh, engineering degree from Kansas State University in 2006. Uh, jumped right into uh, working as an engineer, as a design engineer, senior design engineer. Uh, that was all here in Nemaha County. Uh, did that for about 15 years, uh, decided I was uh, too independent, and uh, decided to start my own business. So, uh, started my own manufacturing business here in Neemaw County. Uh, we manufacture ag equipment. Uh, I do that with my brother. We also, like Ray says, uh, run a family farm. Uh, I've served one year as the, um, on the Neemaw County Planning Commission. I currently serve as a board member for the uh, Neemaw County Conservation District. Uh, my workings, uh, I learned a lot of things. Uh, worked on big projects, designed all kinds of different equipment, uh, systems, and uh, the one thing that I've learned through those years is that you really don't uh, really don't a answer questions or take action unless you're informed. So uh, there was one question that presenter, the very first presenter, talked on the, the transmission line five mile wide. I mean, there's a lot of, I don't know if there's a lot of facts in that or not. Um, I can't really take a position one way or another without being fully informed. Um, what I do know on the topic, because uh, I did see it come up today on Facebook, um, is that that line, uh, the, the DOE uh, proposing all this, there's already been a line that's uh, been proposed in this county uh, for maybe started five or six years ago, the Grainville Expressway. Uh, they've already got landowner cooperation. The line's already planned out. Uh, so from my understanding is, is that that line will meet the requirements that the DOE uh, has requested in this proposal that everybody's seen lately. So it's, I know this all looked new, but this has all been in place for a long time. So I'll take, uh, don't really have much more. I, I, I got a, uh, I guess the reason that I'm running, the number one reason is, is uh, I have people reach out to me um, and probably the, the number one thing was uh, employees, uh, county employees. So that's county employees is the, really the reason I'm up here today. Um, just as a business owner, I know that our greatest asset is our employees. I mean, if I don't have good employees and I don't have happy customers, I don't have a business. So you have to have good employees. You have to have long-term employees that know the system's in place. We can't be rotating people out. We can't be offering the lowest wage to get the worst employee in here. Uh, 
if this county wants happy citizens, we have to have good employees to service them. Um, and we can't, we have a lot of good employees in this county that have been here for a long time. And some of those employees are, I mean, they're getting to the retirement age, and we're n not going to have the people in the position to replace these long long term employees. So that's the number one thing I'm running on is retaining the good employees we have, bringing in new employees, and hopefully having good long term employees for the future. Um, another thing that uh, I'm running on is uh, transparency. Um, I really like to see, I really liked it when the whole wind project thing was going through and the videos were up and you could go watch the county commissioner meetings on YouTube. Um, I, I would love to be at every county commissioner meeting. I mean, I read the minutes, but, and uh, Mary Kay does a great job, but reading the minutes and watching the video is not the same thing. I mean, there's so much stuff that goes on that you, you can't gather from the minutes. Uh, there was something that came up the other day, I read it in the minutes, and I was like, I really wish I knew what was discussed on that issue, but I, you know, I didn't hear it. If there was a video, I could have gone and watched it. Uh, I'd also be open to doing a, a Zoom session for the, the public forum, uh, because, I mean, I, there's times that I've wanted to come in there, times that I've came in there, and uh, I just, I can't sit around, I can't take several hours out of my day, you know, as an em employee or an employer, uh, you know, non-scheduled. So, I mean, I know there's lots of people out there that would like to make comment in the public session. Um, I would just like to make that easier for people to come in, uh, make a Zoom call, come in and make a public uh, comment, you know, from Sabetha, uh, not have to drive all the way over to Seneca, leave work, come over here, take three hours out of their day to make a public comment. I want to make it easier for people to make public comments. Any questions? So you'd be covering the Wetmore area? I'm covering, yeah, Wetmore, Centralia, and then a small slither up the west side of the county. Okay, and talking about the transmission and this power, whatever. Yeah. Okay, are you saying that since it's already kind of been in the works for whatever you said, five or six years, there's nothing that's going to be able to be done about it. It's set in stone, and we're just now the last people to find out. So, so what I'm saying is, is there was already a line that is, was already going to go in here. Before the DOE came out, before the Biden administration was even the Biden administration, there was already a line that was planned to go in up here. Uh, it's going to run just a few miles right south of 36 Highway. Uh, they have... Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Well, I... <laughs> And it, I mean, this is, I, I know the comment was made earlier, but this isn't something that the county commission is going to stop. Uh, I mean, this is, this is above. Well, you could try. You could definitely try. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, you're right. You could, we could definitely try. I mean, and that's where we would start with, for help would be with you guys, right? I mean. Right, yes. And, and, and as a county commissioner, our job is going to be more working with state officials to make sure that everything that's going on is appropriate, right? That they're not tearing up roads and, and doing all this, but if, if this is deemed a, a necessity, right? Like this is national security, like was mentioned. I, I mean, uh, we could do all kinds of stuff, we, but in the end, we're either gonna get sued or we're just gonna be a roadblock that's in the way. Uh, so we, we, as a commissioner, I think we would be better off cooperating um, and getting people to work with us instead of trying to be the roadblock. Sometimes I like to rock the boat a little bit. And uh, once in a while I'd like to see Neemaw County, Kansas, yeah. the first one in the nation to stand up and say, no, we're not going to do that. You know? We can definitely try, but I mean, I just, I've talked to a lot of department heads in the county. We don't have a lot of money. I mean, and so, do we want to spend all of our money on legal fees to and then and then not have any yeah. roads and public services uh, and and probably in the end we're going to get pushed out of the way anyways yeah. right I mean it's it sounds great I mean like to be that David versus Goliath right and we take him down but uh, it's also a big risk and it's a lot of money <laughs> questions.
question in the back. Um, as far as the uh, high mile buffer zone that they're proposing, you're saying you just get out of the way, we're going to get run over. Is it, is, now just a minute, is it worth quite literally a revolution to you as a commissioner if you were to get into this to just get out of the way and let them do what they're going to do because landowners will rise up. I guarantee you. Yeah, so I'm a landowner and, and I don't agree with the five mile easement. And and from what I've seen that the line that they have that and the landowners cooperation they have is not five miles. It's per pole that's set on each landowner and the line being above it. Now this is the change. Yeah, yes, and, and I agree. The five miles is ridiculous. Uh, and I would, yes, I would do what we could to prevent imminent domain for five miles wide through our county. I would not support that. But to say that I'm going to stop a transmission line that's been in place and they've already got all the agreements signed with the landowners, uh, that I, that's unrealistic uh, to think that a county commission is going to stop contracts that have already been signed in place. Uh, I mean, what what is the, the last three terms of county commissioners? Why haven't we stopped this? We've known that this line has been here, right? Why haven't we stopped it? Because the, those landowners and the companies that have leased the ground have agreed to a set of terms. Those terms have now changed, and they've they've opened up a forty-five day window for public comment. Which closes next week. We had just found out about this by accident. Yes. So I, 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 I'm, like I said earlier, I'm not going to make a stance on something that I'm not fully informed on. I'm, I'm going to make a comment, and this is a comment. The DOE proposal that we've all seen, and the Invenergy line that is five or six years old, are not directly related. The Invenergy line will fill the needs of the DOE requirement, but that line, that that line was not initiated per the DOE uh, proposal that we've all seen in the comment period. Is on that is not why that line is coming through here. That line was coming through here for other needs already. And like I said, if if we, I mean, the county commission that we have right now, I I fully feel is against projects like this, and if I. I mean, I don't know why we didn't stop it if we could. I like the comment I made. Uh, I think we're going to burn a lot of money, a lot of time, and not gain much traction. Thank you, Austin. Yeah. Okay. Despite having a heavy Republican county commission already. Our current commissioner should have expanded local government, raised our taxes. They took an action of no action when they had the opportunity to protect our property rights. And regarding transparency, what's happened to our agenda? And we've also been met with opposition to core requests. These practices are all contrary to core values of most conservative Republicans. Do you intend to take a stronger position on these conservative values? Yeah, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, so I am, uh, I've always considered myself a conservative, uh, a Trumper, or whatever we call it today. Um, but yes, I, I do intend on more transparency. Um, uh, only doing executive sessions when absolutely necessary require discipline. But but coming out of that executive session, if there's actions taken, you know, give those actions. Um, and then one other comment that I want to have, I guess, um, is about the reckless spending. Um, from from what I understand from the, some of the department heads that I spoke to, uh, their budgets are pretty tight. But we did manage to spend over $100,000 on a county administrator. Um, that can't make a definitive position on that today, but I'm definitely going to review the need for that position. 
Um, it's easy to say that we're going to cap the uh, county administrator's salaries, but then hire someone to do our job. Um, so I've had a chance to speak with Mike one time briefly. Um, I think he's I think he's a good person, but I just don't know if a county of this size and the budget that we're running on, if a county administrator is needed. Okay. We need to, uh, thank you Austin, we need to uh, continue with the... Uh, <laughs> the uh, second, second person to file is uh, Jason Cook, Jason and his wife. I uh, live also southwest of Centralia, where Jason the shop where he's currently a county commissioner in this district, and he's running for his second term. So, Jason? For those of you who don't know me, I am Jason Cook. I live south of Centralia with my beautiful wife back there. We will be married 19 years next week. Six children, they all go to school in Centralia, ranging, or ranging from senior to fifth graders. Um, I have served the last three and a half years on the commission. I have done the best I can to be transparent. If anybody's ever had a question, I'm open to phone calls. I try to do my best to answer all emails. I know I have missed a few. Uh, as far as the energy thing with that power line we just found out about it yesterday Ray sent me an email it's been in the works probably for about 12 years actually and um, we have been taking action because we have not signed any forms with them to let, allow them access over our roads they have got it from some other counties but not ours um, the employees I know that's a touchy subject as well. We have done wage evaluations to see where we fit in. Some areas we are high, some areas we are low, some areas are pretty good. As far as the benefit goes with that, we try to balance it. Um, to make accusations of reckless spending, I don't believe that is a true fact. We do have a county administrator now. We looked into this for a while because a lot of counties our size, I shouldn't say a lot, there are counties out there smaller than ours that have county administrators. A lot of counties are going to a five commissioner board, and the counties that have done that said they don't get anywhere because then there's five people trying to make decisions instead of three. That's why we went with the administrator. Um, other than that, I guess I don't have too much to say if anybody has any questions. Okay. Any, are any other questions for, for Jason? Yes, ma'am. What do you think is the biggest issue that we have on the south side of the county, and what do you think is some different ways that we can partner with the, with the commissioners in order to improve things on the south side? The biggest issue we have right now, countywide, I think is roads. We have started doing some road grader trainings, and there's going to be more of them in the future. As far as the little towns, I've been going to some city council meetings and there are a lot of concerns with these smaller cities. I'm going to meet with you hopefully shortly. I've met with some Trillian and Gaul. There are, they're needing help. I'll do the best I can to help you, but like I tried to explain the other night at the city council meeting, what I do for one city I have to do for all of them. I got to make sure that I keep it fair. And I do have 13 townships out of the 20 in Nemaha County, so I got a big area I represent. Uh, there are grants out there. I can't promise you we can get them, but you know, I know what Whitmore's going through. I know what Paul's going through. Some I mean, they're just it's, the inflation is killing everybody. It ain't just the county; it's the city as well. Is that a good enough answer? Is that a good enough answer, Anna? Okay. Any other questions? I have a question. Uh, what happened to the agenda? It is on our website. So it's, is it published the week ahead? It is usually available by Friday afternoon. There was a period of time when it wasn't being published. Why is that? Because there was a malfunction on the computer. If you clicked on the one word, Agenda, it would show up if you clicked on weekly or whatever the word was in front of it. I don't remember anymore. It would bring up a previous agenda. We got that fixed now. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jason. Uh, <laughs> all right.
our last candidate to run on the uh, second district uh, commissioner race is uh, Lane Hanselchuk. Uh, Lane and his wife Krista live north uh, west of uh, Wetmore, also there in southern uh, Mahon County. So, Lane. I'm not uh, very good at this at all. Probably better at singing than transfer cash, but that's not very good either. So, <laughs> anyways, um, I guess. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Um, we need a voice. A southern part of the county needs a voice in the courthouse. And I don't, I don't even know where to go about this. I've had several phone calls, uh, several messages on Facebook, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I, we farm down there, uh, run a family farm. Um, and our roads are not very good. Okay, we got a bridge out going to the corner of our property on Highway 9, and they are diverting traffic around through townships and through county roads. Uh, I think last spring, last fall, maybe somewhere in there, the county went in and they did build up the, what we called the Wetmore Bancroft Road. They built it up and did a pretty good job of it. Okay, still needs maintained. You can't just let it go. Um, so I guess I'm standing up for a little bit of that. Um, Next thing, as county commissioner, I'd say is we got to treat our employees better. I mean, <laughs> I worked underneath five different commissioners when I was uh, working for the county on the road and bridge side. We built bridges. We're uh, running boulders, torching, running heavy equipment up and down the highway with not very good equipment. Uh, addressed several times to county commissioners on how unsafe some of the equipment was. We finally ended up getting a little boy. Um, it, so I'm sure some of the people here have seen, you know, some stuff come through. Oh, hundred thousand dollar little boy. Why do I need that? Well, the other piece of equipment was, I yeah, I took it to Wendell and they said they wouldn't pass inspection on it if they rebuilt the whole thing. So that was kind of another thing that some of this stuff needs addressed because I did work for the county and I see stuff that we have done that I'm like, why is this being accepted? Well. Huh? And then all of a sudden you bring it to attention and it just throws, gets thrown at the table. I don't like that. So I'm going to try to be a voice for the people, for the employees. And I mean, if you listen to the public, they will tell you what you need to do, what you, what, you know, what you need to do. And uh, just listen, you know? I mean, go out in the public and, I mean, you know, go to shops or whatever, and you're sitting there talking to farmers, they'll tell you what they need to do, what you need to do. And I think if you just sit there and listen, I mean, I, it's not, I don't, shouldn't say it's not that hard because I haven't done it. But um, I, I do think that, uh, that there's a lot of um, errors in our, uh, in our system here, and I'd like to try to fix it. And, um, I know I'm probably just a 29-year-old young kid with a funny-looking mustache, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think I was raised somewhat right, family farm and everything, and, you know, I just, just listen to people. I mean. So, uh, that being said, I, I'd, I'd really like to be a voice um, for the district too, and uh, give my community, our community, I mean, all the district too, everyone has a voice. It don't matter where you're from, okay? So, I just, just listen to people, okay? And then, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I think, I know it's a touchy subject, but the windmills came through, got more. Corning Centroia, on over. Very touchy subject. Um, and uh, our farm, we did not sign up to the windmills. Okay? Um, not saying that I don't believe on them. I think there's a lot of pros and cons, and you're going to find cons in anything if you look hard enough. Um, I, I don't know that, like I said, this is kind of walking on thin ice here, but uh, there's a lot of money that I think got spent in the north part of the county that we did not see. Okay? So why do we get windmills down there? And yet, the county got a bunch of money off this deal, and it went north. I'm not saying that the people of the north are any less the people of the south kind of deal. We all pay taxes, okay? So that's that being said, that's kind of what I'd like to see. Um, I'm sure there's some other stuff that uh, needs to be touched on, but uh, I'll just wrap this up real quick. So um, I guess that's that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> so, Making all kind of great again. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mike. And then we
get to the uh, third district. <clears throat> third district course that also encompasses um, uh, this area, the Seneca area, and, and around. Uh, it's currently uh, Dylan uh, Times, uh, the uh, county commissioner in this district. He's, of course, he's running on the 62nd district uh, uh, representative. Our first uh, person to file, uh, Joe uh, Dollinghouse. Joe and his wife, Marta, they are near Baleville. They've recently moved here to Seneca. And uh, he's been involved in the Baleville community for a number of years. So, Joe. I ain't real good at speaking either. I never knew this speak in front of my head, so. I'm a lifelong resident of New Hall County, farmed for over 40 years. I just moved to Seneca. I was on the co-op board for uh, three full terms, and I've served on uh, Marion Township for numerous years. I can't remember how many years I've been on there. And I got off to, when I moved to Seneca. I was also on the church council for two and a half years with COVID and stuff. That's why there was more terms. And I got off it too when I moved to Seneca. And I'm also past night, past grand night of the Seneca council here in this company. And they did a great job of rebuilding that. I'm a, I'm a knight in uh, Bailiville now. I, when they started the council there, I moved to Bailiville. Uh, I think the camera should be put back up in the, in the, in for the meetings and stuff so everybody can see what's going on and you don't have to be at the meetings. I went to a few meetings. Now that I'm semi-retired, I go to more of them. I've been to one, I guess. But it's all different now. They, nobody can see nothing what's going on. <coughs> I think the health insurance is a big issue with uh, employees. I have a lot of people come and talk to me about that because they uh, got rid of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield. And now I've heard it'll take five years to get it back. And with the new uh, insurance that they got, they want them to, uh, they, can get, they can't get 90 days supply of medicine now unless they get a mail order to them out of CVC. Nothing so that they get away from the company, the, the local pharmacies here. And to me, that's not a good deal because, you know, if you can't get 90 days supply, if you're used to that, it big makes, they gotta make more trips and do that kind of thing. And I heard that a lot of the, the uh, guys now that are in, uh, with their insurance, it's costing them to work for the county because their in, insurance was part of their paycheck. And now it's costing them to work for the county. That's why I think the turnover has been so large. <clears throat> These people are quitting because they, that's not part of their pay. There's people that have come to me and they said, well, they, they don't come covered nothing no more. <coughs> so I think that needs to be changed if we can change it back or get them a better insurance. And I'd like to see the wages all be scaled according to work. You know, there's a lot of people that are getting more money than the other that have worked less hours. And why should we do that? The people that are here are the ones we want to keep. It costs a lot of money to train quality employees. Anybody that works for the county in the road and bridge or in the trucks, they all have to have CDLs. If you don't have one when you go to work there, Meanwhile the County's got to pay for it. So, you know, then you can, they can't drive a truck or nothing and do none of that. Uh, and I, well, I think if anybody that gets extra training in their job, they should get paid for it. Because, you know, they're getting better at what they do. If we don't cover it in, in, in Nemal County, we need to cover it, you know, in their pay wage. Because that way, they, you, you keep them there. So. You want them guys to stay, or ladies, or whichever. It don't matter. My other concern is the Meals on Wheels. I've had a lot of people come and talk to me about what they all did with, you know, moving the building and stuff. And when they moved the building, I talked to the installer. They didn't need to uh, 
uh, change the change everything, but they said we want all new equipment. They said uh, uh, for the stove, the a, a factory, the guy, the thing that I can't take the proper name for, that sucks the smoke out. It was in good enough shape. It wouldn't have had to be put in new, but they had to put a new one in. Got spending. We're spending too much. Well, and with the Meals on Wheels program, there's a lot of people that can't eat the food now because it's preparation, and with their diet, they can't eat the food that they're preparing. Prepare. It needs to be changed back to where these older people can get this because, you know, the, the guys that got the people that have older folks here, it's fine. But there's other people that only time that they see somebody, if their folk, their children and stuff live away from here, they don't get seen. Nobody sees them. And now what, what are, who are they, who are helping take care of them? Our folks and grandparents paid for this. We all paid for this building and paid for the meals. So make sure we all take care of these people. They're the ones that started Nemaha County and stuff. So I think we need to take care of these people. And about the, uh, what they were talking about, that five mile radius, I don't know anything about it, so I just heard about it Sunday, so I have no clue what was said tonight, so I'm not going to make any comments on that. Oh, and I also want to be transparent on everything. If anybody wants to call me, email me. If you call and I don't answer, if you leave me a message or if there's a number on there, I call everybody back. I don't know if I don't know the number, how do you know what it could be? It could be anybody. Because I got a lot of I got a guy I take care of and a lot of doctors call me, so I answer every everybody's phone call. I don't care who who it is. Because the telemarketers ask me why I answer them, and I said, well, you never know who's on the other end. It might be your neighbor that's just got a new phone. I said, is there any questions for me? Okay. Thank you for having me, and, thank, and I sure appreciate your vote. And our last speech tonight, right, also for the uh, County Commissioner uh, spot, is uh, Sarah Bilkamp. Sarah and her family recently moved to the county where they built their new house just northeast here of Sydney. She's worked at her appraisal business for the past 17 or maybe longer years uh, doing residential appraisals. Sarah? Well, thanks for everybody that stuck out. Uh, here he is here. Um, so I've lived in this county for about 20 years, a little bit over, maybe 20, 20 to 25. Time is, I don't even know. Um, married my husband Anthony. I have three children. Uh, been on the planning and zoning committees here in Seneca. It's been a, a while, but I did did do that uh, at one time. I coached soccer. I coached baseball, and right now I'm a residential appraiser. Uh, I go to probably about 12 counties for that job, half of them being in Nebraska. Uh, the reason I decided to go ahead and do this, I thought it was um, the right time in my, my life to, to get out and make my voice heard and to help the people in my community. And in, when I say community, I talk about the county uh, with this case. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that that need to be touched on that maybe weren't even mentioned here tonight. First of all, um, doing my job, I've seen property taxes go insane, and that's not just in Nemaha County. I feel bad for a lot of people in many counties. I've seen uh, properties where I pull their, their property record card, and they paid uh, $24,000 more. The, or not that they didn't pay it, but their assessed valuation went up $24,000, $20,000, $12,000. $30,000 one year. 
uh, it's crazy how that happened, and, and there's nothing in some ways that can be done about that uh, when it comes to when they assess the values. That's where it comes back to maybe finding alternatives. Uh, one of those alter alternatives, I think we need to be more of a destination county. I think we have things here that we don't necessarily promote the way we could. We have lakes that we could certainly do, do more with, get people coming here, promote fishing, our downtowns. There's so many things that we could do. I was in Marysville the other day. They have the, uh, the trail. Uh, we talk about being conservative with our money, and I am conservative with money, but I do know that out of doing things that draw young people, retirees, people to our county, by doing some of these things, offering things for young families to do, we're going to drum up more business. We're going to drum up more tax dollars that way. The bicycle shop there by the, the Blue Valley, Valley Trail there in Marysville, I walked in there the other day, uh, met my dad in Marysville for Father's Day, and he has all kinds of people there coming there. They're buying, he has $2,000 bicycles sitting in there. This guy is running a successful bicycle shop all because of this trail. How many people do that trail that eat at the restaurants, that stop at the hotels, that shop downtown? I'm not even necessarily promoting a trail, but what I'm saying is you got to use what you have. We have things here. We don't always maybe promote them the way we could. Um, if we have more business development, more economic growth, that might be a way to offset some of these rising property taxes. Uh, so entering this, my goal is really to navigate with an open mind. And uh, I agree with what Mr. Dollinghouse said, transparency and making sure people understand that, that they matter. I think we need to vote with the majority. Uh, I think when we walk into that county commissioner's office, uh, if there's five people in the county that feel one way and a thousand more that feel the other and you're voting with five, maybe you're not doing what you need to do. And I think some of that comes back to finding out what people think. I am a loner in a lot of ways, and I don't really always like to go talk to people. Uh, but I, I will have to change that. And sometimes what, what that's going to take is, I think, a public forum, whether it be online, whether it be, uh, I don't know how we could do that. Someone's going to have to tell me if I get into this job. But I think the public, the county, needs to tell be able to put it in writing how they feel about certain topics. Not just somebody that walked up to me at the gas station and said, well, I, I think this. And, and then I'm supposed to remember, who did I talk to? Can I remember their name today? My kid has to go to the ball game, I can't think. Um, if it's in writing, if there's something somewhere that we can reference back to what our county wants, what they need, what they, and that's easier for me because there's a lot of times I need to sit down on my computer at night or and not remember who, who did I run into that said this, that, or the other. I think we need to really vote with the majority. Um, sorry, I had to use stick words. I, I can't remember everything I wanted to say. Uh, and I, you know, I had somebody call me, well, they messaged me out of the blue. I don't know if they heard I was running for this position. Uh, there's things I, I, it's hard to want to get up here and say how you feel because you're not going to satisfy every, everybody. There's somebody that's not going to like what you have to say. And there's people I care about that support the windmills. I care about those people. I'm glad they found an avenue to make their income. But do I support the, the windmills? I'll just flat out say no. I don't. I don't support them. I don't want to see them. We talk about um, what we want for our county. And one of the things I said, it sounds a little dramatic, but you know, you shut your eyes, you shut your eyes and you think about what do I want my county to be? What do I want to see in my county? So when I shut my eyes, I don't want to see a thousand blinking red lights. That's not what I want to see in my county. I want to see our lakes get more developed and our recreation and our parks and our downtowns. And I want to see a county where people want to come, and when they drive through it, they don't remember a thousand blinking red lights. They remember the people and the things that we did with the resources we had, and that is important to me. Um, so I wanted to say that. Um, there's, there's a misconception by some people that the windmills or some of these alternative 
power sources somehow, you know, we're getting that energy. We're, we're in, I feel, and I've said it before, I feel that Kansas and some, some of our Midwest uh, states, uh, we are a dumping ground for things others don't want to see. And that is how I feel. Uh, so, with all that said, I don't know, there's probably a lot more. I, I had a whole, like, two or three pages written, and then somebody said, you're not going to read that whole thing. I'm like, oh, good. And then I came up with my sticky notes. Um, and there's more in here in my, my, my sticky notes, but I think I'm just going to leave it there. It's been a long night, and if there's any questions, I take them. Any questions for Sarah? Okay, thank you, Sarah. Well, that concludes the county commissioners' races, but now before we.